Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Hey, I haven't seen you in so long. It's been like a year. A year? It's, it's been a year. You know, it's been a, a week. Hi, everyone. Samara is back. She's here. Back and back. How was your trip? My trip was very nice here. I put a picture. I went to a place in New Oh, look at this. Little Shemagog. I didn't even know it existed. We were limited. Um, well, the pandemic is still like some areas you can't go. So we went there and it was very nice. One of my, you know, one of my other hobbies that I like is to collect. Oh, this is so pretty. I like this so much. As well as Daisy. Daisy looks very, very happy and in her, you know. Yes. Yeah, so not all uh, houses allow dogs. So they allowed for her to come. So she got to come on holiday with us and sniff up a storm on the beach. So it was nice. It was nice to, you know, see something other than the inside of my house. Yes. How are you guys? What's going on? Are you going away anywhere to, you know, to relax? Let us know in the comments. Today we are getting ready to kick off new uh, series. We decided to start a cupcake series and we're just going to do some introduction into cupcake baking and decorating today. So, um, hey Jay. Oh, hello Jeremy. I was a slacker, yes. That's right. Hello, hello. So yeah, Fridays, if you're not aware, we decorate cookies and we're just going to, you know, I mean, uh, cookies and cupcakes are different, but also slightly the same in that they're mini projects, right? Like, um, like different than a cake where you're the whole kind of big thing. Each person gets a little work of art. So that's where they're kind of similar. And so there's some tools that will carry over. So if you're good at cookies, you're probably going to be good at cupcakes. Chances are. We'll see. I'm not <laughs> we'll see. Yes, let us know. Are you a team cookie or cupcake or both? <laughs> Hello, June. Hi, June. Hello. Firefly. I wish I knew your real name. It's like calling you. I love Firefly. She said it, she said it the other day, but I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I do like to call. I mean, I can call you Firefly because sure. I love Fireflies. They are so uh, They're magical. magical. Yes. My trip was very nice. Very, very nice. Here, I'll pop it up. You weren't there. Here's where I was. So it was lovely. She was looking at it and you took it off. I was trying to get into the mood. <laughs> hi, hi, Terry. Team so welcome, everybody. Please, if I have to. <laughs> well, as usual, we're going to save the live stream so you can rewatch it on replay. And Han is going to. Han is going to start today. So I'm going new... to show you um, like very basic things that I use to make. I don't make cupcakes that often, but when I do make them, I usually use a muffin pan. <laughs> and it's a 12 inch. I have a Teflon pan. This is a 12 inch. I have several of these. I also have mini one, but I actually, uh, I don't make as many mini one, mini cupcakes, uh, regular size cupcakes. I don't know if each country, if other countries have different sizes, but this is a US size. So. Uh, I baked my cupcakes in, uh, in this pan. I'm going to show you um, some liners. We talked about this before with Mar, about the liners, how when we first started, I guess, I guess into the cupcake um, baking, we were so um, enamored by all the colorful and, you know, cupcake liners with designs on them, and you're so tempted to buy them all. Right? Do you have it on hand, the one, the kit that you bought? Well, I've had it, you know, forever, kind of, it's like a little... Well, how cute, it's a strawberry shortcake cupcake set, right? So you're so yeah. tempted to buy these, but generally these cupcake liners are not a very good quality. Uh, so I personally now just resort to either a good quality white cupcake liner. I really like uh, brown cupcake liners. These actually have some stripes on them. These are like a, more like a gourmet style cupcakes, but these are the ones, these are the basic brown ones. And these you can get like 300 of them or 400 of them yes. for a couple of dollars, yes. So the thing that also happens with these kind of decorative ones is you're always left with six, four, 10, 
and not enough to reuse for another batch. Whereas if you always have like the package of 500 or 300, exactly, it works. Well, for you can do with the leftover cupcakes, you do the crafts, right? You can do, like I've seen a lot of people do crafts. You can make garlands and stuff. Hi, Mary. Hi, Catherine. So you could do that. Now, um, you can also get uh, three freestanding cupcake liners, something like this. And this is a freestanding liner that you just put on a baking sheet and bake them like that. Super easy to take along with you somewhere. And they're really, really cute. These have polka dots on them. I am partial to polka dots. You know that, right? And these are actually um, heavily waxed inside. So your cupcake, I guess that's to prevent cupcake batter from bleeding out, right? And it kind of it makes the liner sturdier. My favorite dough freestanding are these. These are fluted. Uh, these are like for brioche, you know, for bread, but um, it looks like that, but um, you can make cupcakes in them. I have done that many years ago, and I baked um, actually cute little princess cupcakes. Aren't they adorable? You just need a little swirl, you know, a little decoration on the top, and, and there you go, a cute little thing. So these are also available everywhere online. I also have, um, and I don't know if these are still popular or not, these are, do you know what these are? Just just liners, just decoration. These are uh, cupcake wrappers. This is, um, it looks like this. And then it actually has, I didn't realize that until now, it has three slits, depending on the size of the uh -huh. cupcake you're trying to wrap. So what you do with these, you, you, you basically bake it in a cupcake liner and then for a, like a party setting or something like that, you can then nest them. The only thing is because they don't have the bottom, it's kind of difficult to handle them, I find, but they do look pretty, don't they? They do, good. and if I can mention, if you have a silhouette machine, you can make your own. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly, they actually do, yes. They These cupcake liners, that's a good thing that you mentioned, that these cupcake liners, they actually, um, are very popular in a laser cut. Like yes, for yes, Halloween, yes. Halloween, I don't know if you've seen for Halloween, mm -hmm. I've seen um, um, different different designs like the spider web and things like that. Yes. That's really like imagine black, like uh, black yeah. wrapper and white liner. It looks really nice. Okay, I also have, these are probably the most popular in a silver, silver one you can get in a grocery store. They're very, uh, they sometimes I don't know if these have like double I find that those I like the tin ones I find they they uh, impact the cooking time I find they cook faster oh they cook faster oh okay I didn't I haven't thought of that and I also have some cut liners from Japan so just to compare now this is a size of a liner that you would use in a muffin pan um, in US and this is a size from Japan, Japan. So these are quite small. They're also heavily uh, waxed inside, um, but they're so, so dainty and small. So that's about the cupcake liners. Like you said, we do prefer nowadays to have solid colors because you can do more with them and you are not left with six or five liners and you don't know what to do with it. So then you have you know more options. I think if you get a good quality brown, which is a neutral, and then a good quality white, because sometimes brown may be too harsh depending on your color palette. So you can another, have those. And Another thing to remember, now these I picked up here locally in a grocery store, and look at the height on, on these. Yeah, they're, they're not tall. They're, they're not that tall. Like, I, I don't know, like it's hard to say, but it's Your about brown this. ones are probably taller. It's Yeah, brown ones are probably even taller, yes. Well, no, this is not the brown one, and this is the brown one. Yep, it's like quarter inch taller. So depending on, on the size of your cupcake, you might have to adjust the amount of batter you're adding into your liner. Yeah. Um, general suggestion for this muffin pan, it's a quarter cup or up to two thirds up the liner. So make sure that you kind of figure that out. Um, Okay, so that's about that, and uh, I'm going to see, okay, this, see, I thought, oh, this is so cool for Christmas, you know, 
but it's kind of like I don't like it anymore. <laughs> well, I don't think that those would bake well. They'd probably disappear once the grease. Yeah, that's what I think. They would probably disappear once the grease hits it. It's kind of like. <laughs> I saw a t-shirt. I saw a t-shirt once. It was cute. It said, muffins are just ugly cupcakes. <laughs> we had a discussion about what is a cupcake, okay? So I actually did a little bit of a research about that. And so cupcakes, you can make uh, cupcake batter um, different ways, okay? So I'm going to show you a quick video. I actually baked four different cupcakes, no, three different cupcakes using three different methods this morning. Um, one is a blending method. That's the one I'm going to show you. And that's how I made chocolate, uh, chocolate cupcakes, super delicious. And, uh, these are the lines that I bought here. Look, I mean, they, they don't quite a bit, but if I was to use this liner next time, I would add less batter because I added, um, a lot of butter, but they, these dome nicely. So they don't really overflow that as much as some other, other cupcakes. So let me just quickly um, grab this video where it is. Okay, so this is the chocolate um, cupcake recipe. I have this on the blog. It's super delicious. This method actually is similar to when you're making a mud cake, when you are heating up your fat. And I also added some coffee and I also added some alcohol, which adds just nice flavor to it. You want to just heat it up until all of the coffee, if you're using coffee, um, instant until it's all dissolved and until all of the butter is melted and then you have to let it cool and here are all the ingredients that we're going to be using so i'm using all-purpose flour um, and i'm going to get all of the dry ingredients into the bowl now i realized today that i need to start sifting my granulated sugar because uh, i guess not all the granulated sugar is equal my granulated sugar, after I sifted it, it, I ended up seeing larger granules. So I wanted to make sure that I get that rid of those because that can cause uneven baking in the oven once the sugar starts melting. Mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah, you see the, on the bottom, that's all the sugar that is larger. And then we can add cooled um, butter and uh, um, butter, coffee, rum and then we can add the egg you're gonna beat it for about uh, 30 uh, not 30 uh, two minutes or so before you add the egg you can also do this by hand you don't have to even use the mixer you can use a whisk this batter is quite liquidy and um so what i ended up doing i used the quarter measure to first like give me an idea how high do i have to go with the batter and then I poured it into this um what's this called uh, it's, for, for, it's it's made for that Thank you. but you have a really interesting technique and I couldn't find uh, any I don't know where are my decorating bottles but you had mentioned that you use the decorating bottle yeah I use a squeeze bottle and I haven't used it in a while and I couldn't find the lid so I didn't I didn't end up being so able to and use it. I have the bottle, but I couldn't find the lid. So did you, and did you actually weight the, the amount of batter? Be, like first oh, I would eyeball it. After you, you do it often enough, you would just look and they're, you know, I mean, you can kind of gauge that they're about the same, so you know? You can also weight it, like if you're really like, you know, trying to make them like to their for a wedding and you want them to be exactly the same height and all that, so you can also use a scale and weight them. Um, once, oops, once they are baked, these are actually slightly domed and you want the toothpick to come out clean. You can see some of them in the middle, they, they kind of are touching the side. So you want to release them before they get cool because otherwise then it will be difficult. So I ended up using a spatula and just run it around and then you can uh, take them out and let them cool completely. Okay, so that's the cupcake. For a cupcake uh, number one and then i also made and uh, let me bring this up because i don't have the videos ready so Anne is asking in spain do they have caster sugar i they would do have caster sugar it's the right it's like the 
between the granulated and powdered sugar, right? It's like medium. They do, but it's uh, it's only in UK stores. I haven't seen it in a in a Spanish store, and it's quite pricey. So I haven't bought it. So Anna, welcome to our live. We're on on Tuesdays and Fridays, and we put our uh, recipes and backup stuff in our coffee shop. Here's the link. I'm putting it in the ticker there at the bottom. And where else? Oh, here. I'll put it here. This is a coffee shop. Those are the links. And um, did you put anything up in there? Today? I, I have not put anything up. I am going to put a link to the recipe that I am using today for the chocolate cupcakes. I actually have them on the blog, but the recipe is not uh, printable yet. I need to update it, so I'm gonna put it in the comments. It's a really, it makes, the, the, the recipe makes um, about 12 cupcakes, depending That's on nice how well. you them. It's, a, it's a really good uh, size, I find, 12, you know, it's a good yeah. size for cupcakes, and uh, they're really moist. Now, so the other cupcakes um, I made, they're also listed on the blog, but I made some minor adjustments, so let me just bring this up. Uh, little camera oh. business. There. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. You know oh, well. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, here they are. So these are the cupcakes that I made. These are, I don't know if you can guess what they are, but you probably can. They smell amazing. Okay. So these are coconut cupcakes. And I used my brown liners for these. And this is also a coconut cupcake and I swirled strawberry jam inside of these. These are fantastic. These are really, really good. So that's another thing you can do before you bake them. You can swirl um, a jam or, um, yes, it's a small grain, yes. But I have not tried it. Um, jam or you can do, you can add truffles and other things before they are baked. I also used um, coconut milk um, desiccated coconut in these and coconut flavoring. So they are very, very coconutty. Now this is a recipe that is also on the blog and you can see these baked flat. This is a pound cake recipe that I have and I use the reverse method, which means that I first um, mix soft butter with flour. So my butter was coated with flour and this is a good method to use when you're trying to add fresh fruit because butter is already coated with flour. It's not going to continue, um, I'm trying to say, it, it, um, <laughs> like to get like watery, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, so, and this is a cupcake that I made um, with a freestanding liner. So you, you see, it's super easy to remove. Like it's coming out fairly, fairly easy. Look, aren't they pretty? These are so pretty. All right, so uh, we are going to decorate some of these cupcakes. I thought I uh, would do some simple decorating, but I wanted to give um, a chance to Mars say a word on two or two. Say a word or two? <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to start uh, while you are talking. I'm going to start okay. following my eyes, my butter. So I did load a, a document to a, the coffee shop, my coffee shop. So here are some of my top kind of tools that I suggest if you're a beginner. Obviously, a, a cupcake tray. Ideally, skip the silicone cupcakes. It's, it's very wiggly, so if you have a silicone cupcake tray, well, you're gonna need a cookie sheet to hold them. The cupcake trays stack inside of each other. They don't take that much room. Some good quality I cupcake always, liners. Sorry, I always said the cupcake, silicone cupcake liners are more meant for the chocolate work than for the cupcake because they are major pain to clean. <laughs> yes, yes, that too. But if you use a liner in them. Oh, yes. And so the cupcake liners, a scoop to get your batter in the cupcakes. Now, batter varies. Sometimes it can be very thick and other times it can be quite runny. So a scoop if your batter is thick and runny, a squeeze bottle, in my opinion, is what is kind of the fastest and the least messy. Tipless bags are not ideal when decorating cupcakes. Buttercream is thicker than runny icing, so you'd need a thicker 
piping bag. I really like the Ateco. They're a nice quality. Piping tips that you use for cookies, not ideal for cupcakes. You're going to need, you know, usually bigger sizes. Then if you get fancy, you can get the Russian ball tips, the flower tips. I have them here. I'll show you guys. Then larger petal tips, larger leaf tips. This is my favorite carrier. Bring your cupcakes somewhere to a party. It breaks apart in three sections. So you don't always have to have this giant carrier. If you're only bringing a dozen, you can only use like one layer of it and you can put cookies in it. It's my favorite one is that one. And then the disposable version, there's the plastic ones. Those are great because they're washable. The boxes are a little bit more environmental, but they get grease marks and they're ugly really quick. And then they're good for the garbage because it looks dirty. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like, if there's a big grease mark, it's not yes. as... Yes, you know. I do agree. I do agree. So there, so hands ready. She's going to decorate. Um, I'm, I'm not... Uh, uh, oh, you really think I'm a Wonder Woman, okay? Because, like, I said I was going to color the buttercream. Oh, that's why you have your gloves. Oh, how fast do you think I'm Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> this is... Well, you so have the mirror. Oh, this is not a sped up video, okay? So you're gonna have to uh, bear with me while I'm. I'm um... Well, you can also. Are you going to show us some decorating? Well, um, the thing that I. You want me to show something? The thing that I can show yeah, that I loaded. Yes, I, love I do want you to show us something. Come on. Well, I'm gonna show you. So, uh, if you weren't aware, I on YouTube, my channel. In past years, I did have cake and cupcake uh, videos there and I have a few Russian piping tip videos that are that have like literally millions of views and so this is uh, a version to how to um, fill your piping bag with buttercream so here I'm just buttering a piece of uh, plastic wrap with this is dusty rose and then some copper and I'm sandwiching the icing like colors and by doing this you create like kind of a a layering in your icing as it comes out instead of having just one color in your piping bag so you can see here i stencil i sandwich like the colors and then in the center the middle of my flower will be yellow so this is a technique if you're using the russian piping tips so you visualize how you want your color to come out of the piping tip and you create these icing pouches. So I actually put the link to my cupcake playlist in the coffee shop with the supply list. And so if you want to watch that, there's a few videos. And then not to, but then this very popular technique, right? Everybody's seen this one. If you haven't, it's rainbow you just basically pipe your colors and it's easier to do it with a piping tip to get your cylinders of color roll it up oh you see it moved i just gotta squish it back there and then you create another kind of a pouch so it comes out in a different way so you can make these pouches and it really changes the way your icing comes out of the bag Jeremy calls a, a, his belly a, a frosting. It was too hot when I colored one. <laughs> well, that's um, good. I can play the you, other one now. I, I, just this realized, I brought, just spoke, just bear with me, okay? So I brought in because I love electric paint, okay? But I will be honest, I don't know what happened to this one because I'm, I started to call edit and it's coming out like... like it's um, too thick? It's so thick. Like it's... Um. Uh, it's thick and it's leaving specks of color okay oh. so if, that, if this happens to you uh what i would recommend that you add a little corn syrup to it and you shake it shake it you let it stand shake it or glycerin maybe but not like a whole lot maybe like a few drops the glycerin helps to um kind of loosen it yes loosen it and um it um what's the word i'm looking for it constitutes the the, the consistency and so it kind of comes together. I don't have that with me here. So that's why this icing or this buttercream is going to have these specks of um, color in there. Today I'm using American buttercream. We haven't talked about that. 
Um, American buttercream is basically fat and sugar flavoring, and you can also add some liquid to it. Personally, my, what's your favorite buttercream? Folks, what's your favorite buttercream? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> and what is your favorite bar? Well, I do like um, a chocolate ganache, uh, and I do like a cream cheese frosting. Those are probably my two favorite. A nice cream cheese frosting is, is uh, delicious on a variety of flavors. It works with a lot of different um, cupcake flavors, right? You, uh, when you make your um, um, cream cheese, do you also add butter? I do. Um, a third cream cheese, a third butter, and a third margarine. Oh, Jeremy, that is so sweet. That is so sweet. <laughs> so my favorite is actually Swiss buttercream, Swiss meringue. Yes, Swiss meringue because I love how smooth it is and it's not as sweet. The only disadvantage that I find, um, obviously, it's not as easy to put together as American buttercream. American buttercream, you just, you know, you don't have to um, use eggs or anything like that. Swiss buttercream is basically egg whites heated with sugar until sugar is dissolved. You want to bring it to safe temperature to about 160, 170 degrees of Fahrenheit, uh, meaning that the egg is safe to eat. And then you beat it until almost cool and then you add soft butter and it kind of like whips itself into this soft, luscious buttercream. I also like to use it when I make uh, cakes. It's really nice to use on cakes to frost the cake because it gives you like a really smooth Swiss meringue cream cheese buttercream. Okay. How do you add the cream cheese to the Swiss? I guess. I have never used that before. All right, so what are the colors? So I have pink, I have... Um... So Michelle, I, I add the margarine because I find that it doesn't melt as easily because it's quite fragile as soon as like the temperature is a little bit on the hot side and I find the margarine just helps it not be so melty. So that's why I put the margarine in. I'm, I'm showing today um, my version after Han's going to be done. I'm going to be looking at vegan stuff. And I'm working with ermine, is it? Ermine? Yes. Er oh, have you made ermine? Yes. That's what I made today, ermine. Do you, do you like it? Well, I really do not like eating Crisco. And often. Oh, why did you make it with Crisco? Oh, you had to make it with Crisco because of. Are well, there no, any I, other I, just, I didn't. I'm just vegan. saying. I'm just saying. Often vegan recipes uh, suggest Crisco, a vegetable shortening, and I do not like the feel of Crisco in my mouth, on my oh, on my lips no. after oh. it stays. Oh. No, I, I, totally I don't agree. enjoy it. And so Ermine, and this is here in Canada. This is the brand that I buy here. It's um. It's very good. They sell, I use this also when I make vegan cookies. It's great for baking. It's much cheaper than that kind of like really fancy vegan, uh, what's it called? The the yellow, the yellow package. You know what I'm talking about? I have it here in the freezer. The yellow package? Yes, yeah, sure. Yellow Earth package. Balance. I don't know. Earth balance. It's so what's expensive, it? Earth Balance. And so this yeah, one. Earth here, Balance, yes. Very That's good. Expensive? Oh, it is expensive. Uh, this one here, they sell that package is under three dollars. So it's it's affordable. It's good quality. It tastes good. So this is my like vegan preferred product. And while we're at it, I just want to show this, guys. I found this. So this is not sponsored or anything, but Good Natured Products, they sell plant-based clear plastic packaging for food. So food safe, clear plastic, so cupcake trays and all that to put your cookies, whatever, but plant-based. So if you're looking for environmental 
kind of options to package your your food or your things that you're selling maybe check them out because um you know that's important to consider as well we uh, you know guard there's so much garbage that's accumulated and so that's like a pretty significant thing so again if you want to check them out good natured products it's a canadian company in british columbia i thought that was interesting when i found that in my search so you're getting there Han? yeah I, I almost had biceps you know from all this work well i'll just talk about the ermine then quickly so we talk about like yes so everybody is used to you know uh, either the meringue type where you're kind of whipping egg whites introducing butter or you're whipping butter introducing powdered sugar ermine is kind of different where you're making you're, you're cooking flour, kind of making a sort of like a pudding type thing. Pudding custard, yes. It's a custard base, yes. Yeah, but because it's vegan, there's no egg and stuff. So it's not really a custard. It's more like kind of a thick uh, paste, I want to say. And so here I just filmed myself quickly. Um, so this is a, a, a plant-based milk, sugar, and flour and you boil it until it thickens and then you have to let it cool obviously before you introduce it to your uh vegan butter but it really is my kind of preferred vegan like i'm not a vegan but like there's so many food allergies and everything and often when you're going to a party they people are requesting vegetarian allergic to this allergic to eggs allergic to milk it's just something to have in your toolbox if you have, you know, and so once it's uh, boiled, I just strain it in case there's any particles and then you're left with like a silky kind of like I, I said, like a, like a, it's not as thick as pudding. And then you just use that a little bit like if you were to put caramel in your buttercream and then you just whip it together and it can kind of look like it's curled and curdled curled what's the word curdled. and so there you could the thing i saw online i use my torch and i just heat the side of the bowl as i whip it and that kind of rectifies it because it's it's something to do with like the the butter like the vegan butter when you're whipping it it's cold and the pop molecules and all that it's above my pay grade there but but <laughs> by heating the bowl a little bit it helps that and you get a really silky smooth pleasant thing to eat i you don't love that buttercream any yeah. greasiness on your lips and so if that's in the coffee shop with my supply list i have it free there with the coffee shop uh my vegan recipe for the cupcakes and the um the ermine I also, um, want to say, awesome. Susan also posted this and i have heard about this have you tried this vegan no I have heard about it, and um, Laura from Dozen uh, Dozen Eggs, she had mentioned it that it's a good um, butter to use in uh, frosting and baking and stuff. What is it? Is it with the bean paste? I I don't know. I don't know. I I don't remember. I don't remember. It's been a while, but I remember. I remember that you girls. Hi Joseph. You girl. Hi Joseph. You girls really need a thermomix machine, so speed up sp the baking. I have a friend that actually my neighbors, they, they wanted me to use the thermomix machine. Um, uh, my, my cousin also has it. She like loves it and everything, but I, I want to be, I'm a control freak. I want to be more in control. <laughs> and this machine, machine is in control, like of everything you're doing, like it beats you know, everything for you. Like it, it, you set the chocolate to melt, it melts it, so you kind of, I'm more like, why do I want to add certain temperature? So, uh, but I hear it's a really, really good machine. It's about thousand dollars, right? Or something like that. I don't know Thermomix, I'd have to look it up. So there's the recipe is in my coffee shop there, uh, slash Munchalk Infections. I have it with the supply list. So you get the supply list. It's a PDF clickable document. And then I loaded the vegan uh, chocolate cupcakes I'll be decorating and the vegan ermine recipe. And the other thing that's interesting about the ermine which I think is wonderful, is if you wanted to do like a blueberry, fresh blueberry flavored buttercream, well, you can't really throw blueberries in your buttercream. That'll be a little bit weird, but you could certainly throw a few blueberries in that milk, 
because you can make regular ermine with milk and you know like uh just regular and so you can do it with the almond milk or whatever and then you boil your fruits in there you get all the yummy taste you get the beautiful natural colors and then you make your buttercream and you're going to get the this infusion of flavor naturally as opposed to using you know kind of bottled up stuff so blueberry season is coming up you can make some blueberry flavored or tea infused whatever you like oh it's two thousand dollars two thousand oh i'm gonna i'm gonna get my cannibal it's about 600. what's it called thermomix my cousin she swears by it my neighbors they actually were like well you need to you know you need to have it you need we you, we can borrow it too because you don't have a mixer i'm like it's if I break cool. it, if I break it, imagine if I break it, I'll be uh, two thousand dollars. Two thousand one hundred dollars. Wow, wow. Well, it better does everything, clean itself and all. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a pricey uh, machine. Um, so, are you ready? I think so. Now, I'm not like I said. I'm not very used to working with American buttercream. I do prefer Swiss buttercream. It is notoriously difficult to color Swiss buttercream. If you like to work with Swiss and don't know how to color it, I have a detailed blog post about it. How I color it with with regular gel colors. What I do, I heat the butter. I actually take a little bit of buttercream, and I put it in a bowl. Or maybe I'll show it next time. And I heat it up in the microwave with the food color. What that does, the heat activates the color and it makes it really, really vibrant and how it should be. And then you can add it to the remaining buttercream that is uh, still um, uh, pipeable and it helps to achieve bright colors that way. Otherwise, it's usually very muted. Like when you add green, leave green to your Swiss buttercream, it's just this dark green, it's very, very ugly. Um, you can also use oil-based food colors, but I know those, not everybody has those on hand. So gel colors are probably more um, uh, pain tree friendly, I guess. Uh, people have them more than uh, all, about all colors. Okay, all right, so I'm going to just do I, uh, what's really popular these days. Um, it's just not, a, not as, I mean, normally you decorate a cupcake with a swirl, but today we're going to use uh, two different tips. So I've got my star tip, this is number 18, and I also have a petal tip. Um, star tip number 18, it's also good for cookie decorating. So I know Marlene had uh, mentioned earlier that uh, there are cupcake, uh, piping tips more um, in favor to use on cupcakes. Those are the larger, larger tips. That's the yellow one. That's a large tip. So I wouldn't use that on cookies. But you could actually use some of the tips that you use on cookies. Not all of them because some are, some are really small on your cupcakes if you wanted to. So I'm going to do, this is really like so, so simple. So you just use, can you see? You can't even see. Where is my camera? Oh, here it is. And you can see my buttercream. It's not super stiff. And you can, um, it's, there is no uh, signs in this. And now you just do whatever you want to do. Pipe little stars. Now, when you're doing the, when you're using the leaf uh, petal tip, you want to make sure that the narrow part of the petal tip, because it has two sides, right? It has a white part and a narrow end. So you want to make sure that the narrow end is facing up. So I'm going to start at this end. just going back and forth and you can use different colors you can you know have fun with it you could even use um, different flavored buttercream like Marlon mentioned uh, it's fun to flavor your butter buttercream with different flavors I can see this little bit here it's moving out so I'm going to scrape that off you can then use some pretty sprinkles if you wanted to So complicated. All right, let's try this. Um. Well, the thing that some people struggle with, um, depending, is arthritis. So if you have arthritis, it's difficult for you to do a constant long squeeze. So what Han is demonstrating is less squeezing and little bursts of squeezing. 
So it might, if you have struggles with your hands, this might be a little bit more forgiving with these types of issues. Oh yeah, that's true. That's a good, thank you. And you can finally use all your piping tips that you bought that you yes. have never used before. You know, I don't know about you, but I do buy all the piping tips and uh, then they are sitting there and nobody's using them. Well, this technique also, as I'm looking at you, I think it'd be fun for kids because kids like okay. to try, try everything. You know, oh, I want to put a little bit of pink. I want to put a little bit of, you know, they want to put everything on it. So this you know, way they can... Be if you think about it, you could make Santa this way. This could be a face, like a green yeah. face. Yeah, I mean, you can really like have fun with that. Different colors. These are very like summery colors that I decided to use. Mm -hmm. Sprinkles I'm using are from, these are fancy sprinkles. My gosh, yes, those are, those are like what, $10, $12 a bottle? Probably. Use them sparingly so they last you a lifetime. <laughs> but really you don't need to use a whole lot of these sprinkles you know they it's a small bottle they're quite nice it's a nice uh, assortment the large balls are probably not something you want to munch on although it says yeah i guess they are i mean you just have to i guess suck on them they are edible okay i'm going to do i wish i had um put my um Pink into you're not oh, in frame, darling. That up, yes. Am I in frame? Is that a 104 or is it bigger than the 104? This is, no, you are amazing. You are amazing. This is 104. How did you know? Because I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I answered my own question, yes. So Jeremy's saying it reminds him, I think, of Lisa Frank. I don't know, is that an artist, I would presume? Yes, that is. It is an artist. That's awesome. Thank you to be compared to, to not, not not being compared, but. <laughs> Lily Pulitzer? Yes, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really just, this is a last minute thing, like I always do, kind of. I just wanted to have a little fun, you know? It's so exactly. Special. Not everything has to be super planned out. You can have just fun decorating evenings, invite a few girlfriends, or maybe even just do it with your children. They'll oh, love I it. Actually yeah. have, these are my favorite kind of sprinkles. Yes, the What's your favorite kind of sprinkles, guys? Let us know in the comments. Do you have a favorite? I love Jimmy's. Don't fight me on it. They are called Jimmy's. <laughs> I know some people call them differently, right? I don't, Jimmy. Know. I don't know what other I, name. I lived in Pennsylvania. I think they were invented in Pennsylvania. Cylindrical sprinkles are Jimmy's. They are my favorite because they are soft. They are not hard as a rock. Um, they look pretty. They're cheap. They are pretty cheap. They also, Best sprinkles, yes, yes, I love these sprinkles. Okay, I'm gonna do one more, a couple more. Or I do have blue, should I do blue as well, guys? I have blue, maybe I can do blue with the leaf tip. May as well, you have it there. Okay, I don't have, um, I actually have, this is a tipless bag. So I'm going to use it with a tipless bag, although when you're using super stiff buttercream, I wouldn't recommend it. Like Marlin said, it can burst on you, but this body cream is kind of soft. They sell, I saw on AliExpress now, they're selling these silicone piping bags, which do look interesting, I must say, for buttercream, because again, if we talk about how much plastic, um, you know, it reduce a little bit. The only, my only, cause, how big is it? Do you know? 
Uh, I think they had them in a variety of sizes. You can buy whatever you want. And then there's the old style, the fabric ones from back in the day, you know, the classic fabric kind of coated inside pastry yes, those, bags. Those I actually do like. The only thing is you have to make sure that you dry them fairly quickly or they do start to mold. Really? Oh. Yes. Or I mean, like, not like, it's, it, I didn't get penicillin or anything, but um, it will get like, yeah, like... Yeah you know, little um, slimy and stuff. Mm. Do we have any questions? So I'm gonna be using blue now. So I figured, all right, let's see what we can do with the blue. Um, I think you're saying, Anna, confetti. Confetti sprinkles, maybe? Those are fun. I like to use those uh, for de as decorating elements. I sort through the colors and use them. Oh, those are pretty to make a little flower. Michelle tested out the silicone ones and she said she does like it. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. So I guess they wash out well. Like it's um they're washable. I do wash my plastic ones too. I do. Oops, sorry folks. I'm out of uh, the frame. And if you don't have a leaf tip, it's super easy to make the leaf tip. You just cut a V shape on your piping bag. Now, what kind of center should be pink, huh? Sure. I'm going to do. Cynthia's so, loving your blue. Thank you. Let's see if we can pull this off. And then you can do a star. Yeah, this is definitely for the kids. Fantastic. So if you need an activity for your children during the summer. Well, again, the children have trouble with long bursts of pressure, right? If you're frosting a cupcake, often you have to squeeze for a long time in a very consistent pressure. So this is little bursts of squeezing and it, it's, it's a little bit more conducive to their abilities. Very nice cupcake. That one turned Are out. Ready? Are you ready for the chocolate one? Okay, let's do the chocolate one. I really like the blue. That is so pretty. So pretty. So what are we going to do with the blue? Um, maybe I should... Um, I'll do some long, long, long um, leaves. I really do prefer working with Swiss. Oh, you know what? No, I'm going to scrape that off. I wanted to show you um, if you are in a pinch and you need to ice your cupcakes you can also use a little scoop oh. and then um you can just if you don't have a piping tip let's say right mm -hmm. you can just uh and then, uh, well, I like the idea of the cupcake scoop for the same reason as for when you put the batter in. You can really control the amount and everything is going to be the same, right? You're not in frame. And so everything is going to be the same. All your cupcakes are going to have the same amount of, uh, of icing or frosting. Yes. Oops. It's a little runnier than I would have liked. You can then dip it in, in sugar or like... Yes, yeah, Elaine, yeah. Uh, you don't want to necessarily use the bags you use for buttercream with your royal icing because trace amounts of grease can cause your royal icing to not dry and to like it just mess it up. So Yeah, I always, I actually have a separate pouch for the buttercream ones mm -hmm. and the royal icing ones. I don't use the same ones.
I'm going to do this thing one more time. The difference, I think, Julie, uh, icing and frosting, right? Icing is just kind of like runny, kind of like sugar and milk type thing. And frosting is like fluffy and whipped and more airy. So icing is like what we put on um, a donut kind of, I think. Like it's kind of like just like a, not as... Hey, is that, what do you think, Hannah? Is that, that's what I, I always have, uh, like, uh, because people use that term very loosely. You have, oh, I'm going to use icing on my cake. I'm going to use it frosting on my cupcakes. And for me, like, did you say, uh, for me, like, icing is always looser. Yes. Than frosting, but a lot of people will say, I'm putting icing on my cake. I'm icing, basically, you use, you can use, I'm icing my cake or I'm frosting my cake. So it's like, uh, maybe it depends on where you are. Like like I said, Jimmy's are called sprinkles in certain areas of the US. Some some uh, areas don't call them Jimmy. So I don't, to be honest, I don't really, well, no, but I personally, like you did, like icing is looser than frosting. That's how I kind of, um, oh, you can wash them in a dishwasher. That's amazing. June's saying frosting icing is the same thing. Yeah, okay. And then um, Katie's saying uh, it's more like icing is more glazed and frosting is whipped and fluffy. So that's it. I mean, it's uh, it's it's all sweet and yummy. Oh, this is a leaf tip. Never mind, all right. Would that be like a drip cake or a bun cake? You're asking the type of cake she's decorating, the, the type of cake? This is actually a coconut, very good. You're not in frame? Of course I'm not in frame. That's what I like to be, out of frame. So this is coconut, it's so good. It's coconut with, um, with coconut, real coconut, like coconut, shredded coconut. <laughs> It has three coconuts, shredded coconut, coconut flavoring, 20 drops of oil flavoring, super, super concentrated, and also coconut milk, unsweetened. Very, very good. Very good. I love coconut. Yeah, I think, Anna, you're asking, I think that the icing would be what you do, like drips on a cake. So you would, you would do the um, frosting, kind of crumb coat and ice and, and decorate and then you would do your dripping with the icing let it drip off the sides if that's what you're saying okay let's do this baby this should be fun oh again blue i don't know i'm attracted to the blue oh, you're, right. you're not in frame Well, uh, Teresa, there there is like version. People do put uh, the icing. I've seen it on cupcakes where they just kind of like spoon it on and glaze. glaze? Yeah, they kind of like glaze their cupcake, kind of, and it's just like a little bit on the top, just a little kind of chocolate with uh, milk, and they just put that on their cupcakes. I've seen it. At the end of the day, your cupcakes, you can put whatever you want. You could put peanut butter on them, you could put cream cheese, you could put whatever you want on them. Everybody's loving it, Han. Linda's saying your work is always so good. Thank you, which is fun. Preppy heaven today. I'm not really piling it up like I don't know about well, you folks, but I prefer more cake than frosting. Yeah, that's a, that's another great part of making your own is that you can adjust your quantities, uh, kind of how you want. That's another thing. 
Teresa's saying they're beautiful is European versus uh, American uh, usually is sweeter in the United States. The palates have developed, the food is kind of just sweeter. And so you, you kind of get desensitized to salt and to sugar. And so the more you eat, the less you taste it. And so you get acclimated and like it sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. And in Europe, like you can adjust the, sh the sugar a little bit more when you're making, let's say like the Swiss buttercream and that type of stuff, because you're adding the air is with the egg white. And, and so you don't need to thicken it with the powdered sugar. And so it's a lot less sweet, right? June likes more cake than icing. June is um, my team. I do, I have to say, like, I do like to look at the pictures when it's um, a lot, a beautiful cupcake and it looks nice, but the, uh, I would definitely scrape that off and that would be like, um, that would serve other 10 cupcakes, but it's really pretty to look at. I think she's saying though that she likes a little cake with her icing. So it's more icing and a little bit. A little bit. Now this could be a snowflake. Look how pretty that is. That could be for, uh, yes. for Christmas, look. But you could oh. totally do that technique on a cookie. Yes, you could. I actually like that quite a bit. I do like it. I wanted to show you, um, and then you could you could actually use uh, white nonpareil, so it would be really nice for like, <clears throat> excuse me, like a little frost. Very mm -hmm. cute. All right, so I have um, I've got the chocolate one. It's domed. I find the domed ones are a bit harder to decorate. Do you find that? Depends what you're doing. Depends what you're doing. Um, I find that, um, you know, for florals, I like it when it looks like a bouquet. I don't like a bunch of flowers oh, yeah. flat on a cupcake. I like it when it's rounded. And so, and if you were doing, let's say, Cookie Monster or something, a cartoonish character, it's nicer too when it's rounded because it creates kind of the dimension of the face. You guys want to look up um, an Instagram account, Jane Taylor. She does floral cupcakes and quite. Uh, also, I, Sophia's cupcakes. Oh, I, yeah. Well, I don't know her. I don't know. I'd have to look her up. But are, I'm sure amazing. Florals. Today I'm just using basic tips. You don't need any fancy tips. Some of the cupcakes that you'll see on Instagram, uh, they are made with uh, specialty tips that are um, available in uh, specialty uh, stores online or bakery stores. If your buttercream becomes too soft, what you do is stick it into the fridge or freezer for, um, oops. I always forget that this is, uh, I, I was expecting, uh, well, never mind. I wanted blue there, but it's okay. Oh, I thought I, I, it's a star pick, never mind. Should I do uh, one more? Well, um, it's, uh... It's uh oh we are in a good shape. I actually prefer decorating cookies. 
Well, we decorate cookies on Fridays, which is Fair. our cookie lunch break. And we are back this week on Friday. I'm going to do one more just so we have a nice, uh, so I have two, four, six, we have a pair, so we have nine, I'm going to do one more. That's a good tip, Nancy. She cuts her cupcake in half and makes a sandwich with it. Hanyala's YouTube says not available. I'm not sure what that means, but... I don't know. I'm going to do now. them here to make this even more fancier you're doing still decorating right mar what are you going to decorate well i don't know depends how much time's left well i'm done i'm done Ta -da. very nice Oh, Jennifer, so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> so here they are. Beautiful. Eat the frosting of it, then put more frosting on it, and repeat this, and eventually eat the cake, maybe. <laughs> Okay, so, All right, so Mar, it's your turn. I'm just gonna just quickly show a few things here. So the, um, I put the link to my playlist to my cupcakes in uh, my coffee shop there. If you go and get the supply list and everything. So there's quite a few, the decorative kind of like um, wall tip, the Russian piping tips. Those are, uh, people see them and find them a lot of like interesting. So I share kind of how to use those. So earlier I had showed how to layer the buttercream on the plastic wrap. So this is what it looks like when you're actually using it. So this is a rounded kind of a big cupcake and I'm just adding a ruffle along the edge so that the edge of the cupcake is kind of hidden. And then here you can just see in one fell swoop you just pipe the flowers with these flower tips and usually they come in lots and they do all kinds of different flowers and you can see there in the middle by like how i had layered the um, the icing well it comes out differently and here's the rainbow one that i showed and again the ball tip so this is a bit of a wonky tip while you're squeezing the icing essentially is coming out of the sides and so you're left with this hole and so I used uh, the another different flower tip, the same kind of like Russian flower no, tip. Your icing is super stiff for this, right? It has to be super stiff. It, it does. Uh, I get a lot of questions with regards to using whipped cream. I would not recommend whipped cream with that. And so I just want to show them here. I have a few of them and I just want to show you um, what to avoid if you do want to buy those. So here let me just add my camera to the stream here and they come either at, as one piece did i put the picture here i wanted to just show you oh here you can see so if you look the the, the ball tip and then that rush oh here it's this one so if you look at that piping tip the hole where the icing comes out is actually soldered together it's not one piece that's molded together like this one if you look closely at this piping tip it's actually um one piece that was like you know machined and squeezed out and the one that's soldered i did have 
like problems like it, it literally um broke apart like the soldering is chintzy so if you're gonna invest in these and buy these look for the ones that are molded as opposed to soldered so that you don't have uh this happen here let me just show you so then you're left with just this big hole because the piece falls out so just take note of that if you're shopping around for the russian uh, tips they come in a wide variety of you know kind of different things this one here is just to do petals and you can use them also just to do the middle of the flower so you could start let's say pipe the middle in let's say a yellow I don't get the one you have with just for the pedals. Oh. This I one? don't have one. No, I don't have that one. No. Mine so came in this cute little box. I don't have that one. So you could start with this, let's say for the middle, and then come in and just add, you know, the petals around the side. So this is just an option if you wanted something. You can quickly fill a cupcake quite, you know, fast with this. And then the other great staple is the Ateco. They have a really nice set. It's like this. You these know, I have tried these on with Roto. It does work. It is a bit tricky, but I tried it on cookies. The only thing is I the cookie had to be iced. Like otherwise it wasn't like I had a hard time with it uh, to kind of stick to the raw. So no, what I've seen is you can actually fill it with icing and then seal this one here with saran wrap. So you put your icing and then you push you push with the other piping tip with the royal icing in there, and then you can use the you know the flower scissors and cut the flower and let them dry. So you're making kind of like transfers in advance. But they're tricky to use with the royal icing, and they take a lot of icing because you have all this kind well, of. Someone is asking, what is the what what Russian tip would you say is good for the the beginner? Well, it's all about your consistency. To be able to achieve a defined flower like this, it's your consistency. So your icing cannot be runny, and you have to watch out if you have hot hands. Um, for the petals to really hold and maintain like that, you need a thick icing, a, a thick frosting. You see like the petal, the, the um, ruffle around the edges, the leaves, everything is quite stiff. The video on YouTube is very detailed. I explain it, but that's just to show you like some design options and hand loaded a few others here. She made this. Um, oh, no, it's a go Godzilla. I made um, this is Swiss buttercream. Now this is Swiss buttercream. It's uh, I do find it. It's uh, I like to work work with it much better than. Uh, well, it's it's to show also. You see here, she used many cupcakes grouped together to create a design as opposed to just an individual design. So that's yes. cool. and the teeth are made with marshmallows. I just flattened the marshmallow. And an eye, it's an upside down um, chocolate disc. Yes, it can be, it kills, uh, well, oh, I, yeah. uh, it can be warm or soft. Uh, I found it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Tokyo, yes. It wasn't too bad. You're, uh, you, but you have, and the thing is, that's great though. You do work quite quickly with those. Here's another one of Han's creations. She made those little tiaras. How do you do those? Those are actually cho those, those are chocolate. You pipe those on a piece of wax paper or parchment. You do have to, I did have them curved a little bit. So I was piping them on a, you can use, they're small. You can use a, um, the, the, a the, paper, the, 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 paper roll. Yeah, yeah, or like even a toilet paper roll or whatever, you know, a paper towel roll. And then, you know, um, Here's These are the first ever cupcakes I think I made with like multiple colors, inspired by yours truly. Um, <laughs> and then these are, uh, I had so much fun making these. These are very popular on my blog. These are obviously basketball hoop cupcakes. I used uh, actually uh, mini cookies. You can see these are on a stick. Um, they had cookies, when you're trying to put them, uh, incorporate them into your cupcake design, you have to um, keep in mind that if the cookie is too big and too heavy, then it's going to uh, mm -hmm. kind of be difficult to make it uh, stay yes. upright. Yes. So these are quite small, maybe how a uh, uh, inch and a quarter or something like that. And then I use the mini 
mini um, 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 what are those candies? Help me out here. My I love yeah, those are the Reese's pieces. Yeah, yes, yes, mini, but these are they are the minis. So this is the vegan chocolate recipe. Um, vegan stuff is, you know, I mean, the thing is, is we've been so c conditioned, I want to say, or we're so used to recipes that have been, you know, tried and true and tested throughout, you know, our grandmother. So, great Cynthia, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Cynthia is asking, Amara, you got a set of Atiko tips from where? That's from, a, uh, I got it from a local cake store, but Ateco, a lot of Amazon so stores sell Ateco. So just write a Teco piping tip. I do have a, a different set, a Teco as well, in my um, coffee shop, the supply list for today. Okay, coffee shop, for, for those of you who are just joining us or you're kind of lost a little bit where to find a coffee shop. So here is the link at the bottom. So this is Marlin, Marlin's coffee shop. And you can find everything from today's uh, live stream there. She put up a supply list, correct? Yeah, um, yeah. And um, whatever and so, that you'll find in the shop. So I was just saying, like, the recipes that, that we're used to eating have been developed through time. Like, you know, our grandmothers kind of developed them, and it was always eggs. and So now this new kind of way of eating, I find that sometimes we're trying to replicate the recipes with this new way of eating when really, I, and for me, I find that new stuff should be completely invented. So they're... Constantly just trying to, you know what I mean? Like they're trying to jam a, a square peg in a round hole. But as far as like converting recipes, this is one of the better I find tasting. Um, it's a very moist cake. It, um, I think you could fool people. They wouldn't know that it's vegan. It's very airy. It's very nice. Well, I, f I find that... Um Gluten-free, it's harder to uh, do than vegan. No? Yeah. I'm trying to get it so that you can kind of see it. No, we can, so, we can see. We can see. So I, this I recipe is in that, like, in that coffee listing. I put it there. I mean, there's there's um, essentially not much in here. There's flour, sugar, cocoa, baking soda, salt, and then coffee, vegetable oil, vinegar, and vanilla. If you don't have vanilla in a chocolate cupcake, I find vanilla is a little bit lost with a strong chocolate and coffee. It's like the standard ingredient everybody puts, but if it, it you know if it's expensive, it's not an essential thing anyway. So it's a very nice cake, very fluffy. So if you're looking for a vegan recipe, it's it's quite good. And then here is that ermine again, that vegan um, frost or frosting. Yes, now I'm getting my thing. So this one is, uh, it looks nice actually on camera, but here it's kind of like a dingy brown. And that's another thing that happens with vanilla. Vanilla does pigment, it's brown. And so if you want to maintain a white icing or frosting, you want to maybe use um, a um, artificial thing, but it depends if you're gonna be coloring it. Yeah, Wilton has um, clear vanilla extract. The, another thing, I don't know if this does work with, I don't know how is the, the real color of this, but you could also add when you, with Swiss buttercream because there's so much butter, right? And usually butter, butter it's like this yes. light yellow. So it also lends the color to the meringue. So meringue is pure white, but as soon as you start adding butter, it starts to turn on this. It doesn't bother me. Like I have, like, it doesn't really bother me, but if it bothers you, I uh, sometimes would add uh, like, but it has to be a minuscule amount of purple to, mm -hmm. to kind of take away that yellow tint. But exactly. minuscule. So this is powdered uh, food color by um, by drip color, and so I'm just going. I'm using my boo boo stick. I find this is great to get your um, food color, your powdered food color, into your container. You see, it gives gives you like your little scoop here. And the other thing that's great is. Like when you're doing the gel, it's harder to control. Like when you just want a little bit, I do like the powder for this. So this is a different powder than I've used in the past. This is made specifically for fat, like when there's fat. Oh, okay. And you don't have to do like, um, re like, no. it in the water or something. You just stir it in. 
So you can either, if you want to have like a bit of a marble, you can put it dry in the piping bag and it does like a speckling when you do it that way. And you do need a, you do need quite a bit here. You can see it's still quite light. I'm going to do another good scoop so we can get it like all pigmented. This is, so if you're going to make like the, the vegan, uh, this vegan version for the cake, you probably need three to do three times the recipe of the icing or the frosting to go with that recipe of cupcakes. And so the, the ermine does kind of like look like it's maybe curled or curdled, whatever the, the word is. Yes, yes, I know. So you just heat the bowl. I use my torch as my KitchenAid was spinning. And, you know, we're used to seeing everything hyper-colored, but, you you know, you, you can, I've said this before in cookies, you can whisper colors to people. You don't need to scream every time, you know, like sometimes well, you can. that's nice how you said it. Hey? Can, but that's like it's like uh, so poetic. <laughs> you know, into this oh. Instagram account, account, they do they do a lot of poems, and I love it. And uh, they, they, that was so poetic. You can whisper color to people. And so this, they get it that it's pink. It doesn't have to be super dark. And then, so the other thing with the the powder, it does make a little bit of a mess there. And usually, you're better to wipe it dry and then come in and wipe it after with a cloth. I'm going to put my piping bag, my piping tip in. I'm going to use this one here. It's super big, uh, a Teco 827. So, um, and as a question, I know you don't have Master Elite. Now, I have Master Elite. I have tried it in Royal, but I find it has to be, I, I have, uh, maybe I had made a mistake. I put it directly, like Marlon is putting it into the uh, her buttercream. But her color is specifically designed to work with uh, with fat, right? So it's like uh, blending in really nicely. Now I found that um, when I put it directly into the Royal Master Elite, I was getting um, specks. I, it wasn't. It, it was. Uh, it wasn't. It was like this. Okay, it was giving you the speckled. Like spe yeah, specks. So I need to. I think I need to dilute it in a little bit of water, which then affects the consistency of Royal. Yes. Yes. So I don't know. I have to play with it. Maybe more, put so. it. You have to put it in uh, with your egg uh, before. With, with, with before, I guess. So I've got it in, and I'm marking it with my scissors, so I know where to cut. So if you cut the hole too big, when you're squeezing, your piping tip can fall right out of the bag. So now I'm squeezing it just. I'm cutting it just past the spikes, so that when I squeeze, well, my piping tip doesn't come out of the of the piping bag, which is very annoying. And now I've got it in this cup and it just makes things easier. You know, we only have two hands. I'm trying to get it in. So then you're easily able to just use the cup to kind of press it. You can, you know, and keep the edge of your piping bag clean and you can kind of squish it in there. And sometimes you'll get air pockets and that will, you know, uh, impact. Sometimes you'll be piping and you'll get like a burst. So I prefer if you're making an order, you want to put your cupcakes in the box before you decorate them because you could stick your finger in them. It happens. It's like cookie decorating. You're at it and you're focused. And next thing you know, you've ruined one. So if you have them in the box and then you're not having to take that. See, this is not ideal. If you've got them iced in this tray and then after you have to lift them out, you're probably going to ruin them. So Put them in your box that you're delivering them in. This is not going anywhere aside from my house, so it doesn't matter, but you want to Thank think. Thank you, Firefly Katie. That's a good idea to dilute some of the powder, the, uh, the master lead in Everclear. Uh -huh. yeah, that's a good idea because it evaporates. Yes, it might make like a little paste. See my hand? And so this is a very, very big piping tip, and you can always check how it's going to come out in your bowl. I also am not a fan of, of like more frosting than my cupcake. And here, if you're not, if you're new and you at, at this and you're not sure, you can just, you see, I'm just squeezing. And as it comes out, it expands and fills my cupcake. You don't always have to, you know, go overthink things. You can just do that. 
And then the other option is they start from the center and they kind of like create this swirl to kind of like create a flower. So you're doing kind of like a, um, a rose. And then here the end, you can put a little pearl or a little decoration here to hide the end that isn't as pretty. This uh, really ices nicely this it's stuff. nice and stiff not like my buttercream yes and i would say probably it's got a little bit more um tolerance with regards to heat yes, i'm not saying you want to have this in a uh, 100 degree weather but it is more tolerant and the amount, if you don't have a lot, a big batch, well, the, what, this version will ice more cupcakes than the rose version. So if that's a factor and you don't have a lot of icing or frosting, well, you want to think about that or else you're going to have to make another batch, you see? And then you've got a considerable amount left in there. So you're going to push your finger in there to get the last bit, but I'm going to fill up my I do that as well. I was wondering how people do it. Well, you have no choice. Yeah, that's what I do. Also, folks of you, those of you, I see we have more people joining us. If you are just joining us today, we are making um, cupcakes. It's an introduction to our new series that we are hoping to do here on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we're just decorating some simple cupcakes. Marlon is now demonstrating how she is using um, vegan buttercream on her vegan chocolate cupcakes. Both recipes are listed in her coffee shop. They're with the supply list. And if you're, if you're just uh, arriving, you can watch on replay. The live will, will remain. And if you are watching on replay, let us know where you are watching from and let us know you are watching the replay. So yeah, the bigger the cupcake liner, the fewer the cupcakes you'll be able to make. So if you get the big cupcake liners, well, they're very nice. They make a super nice cupcake, but you're going to have less. If you're making them for a school party, well, you don't need the big, big cupcakes. And then here, let's, I'm just going to do it this way because it's just like fast and easy. It's just to show you guys and you get like a, a decent ratio cake to cupcake. You see, if I lift it up and I show you on the side. You see, it's like, and this I filled it up really like practically where the line is. So probably two thirds because the vegan cupcake does not rise like a, like a regular one. So you can sometimes adjust, test your recipe to see how much it rises. If you find your cupcakes are not filled enough, you know, because not all recipes are the same. So that's it for today. Like Han said, this is a new series. Today we just wanted to kind of give you guys the basics with regards to tools. And if you guys, is there anything you'd want to see? We're open always to suggestions. And we're also going to do uh, more decorated versions, not just yes. the buttercream. We're going to do, I'm going to make my uh, homemade marshmallow fondant. We're going to use embossing tools. Um, um, different malls, right? Um, yes, uh, yes. That's whatever tools we had that we bought and we forgot we have them. Yes, like something like that. Oh, I have that. I have the blue one. Aren't those the best, the blue one? Yes, they are very nice. So if you have cookie fondant molds, well, usually these are the ones that you would use for cupcake. They're cupcake size, like a button. If you made the button, that would look really nice on the edge of the rose or you know, all kinds of things. And you want to think about how hard the sprinkles are that you're putting on your cupcakes. It's rather unpleasant to bite into a luscious, soft cupcake with beautiful, you know, buttercream and then hit concrete. So think about that. They're nice to look at, but they're not that pleasant to eat. <laughs> okay. So uh, I would say it's also not pleasant cupcake in one hand and a tooth. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. You don't want to get sued. <laughs> oh, Sorry, it's not funny. But, um, nobody's going well, to... Again, all of your recipes are on the blog. So, Most so. Of, yes, all of the recipes are on the blog. My blog is hanielas.com. You can research there. I also put a link in a comment where uh, it's uh, the chocolate uh, cupcake I made. The very domed one. Um, that one, yeah. 
it's a uh, oh it smells good the addition of uh, a little bit of alcohol <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. So that's it. So you can check out her recipe. She has all her icing recipes. And I think she has also the non-version ermine. Oh, on her. <laughs> you just made sure that it was... Uh, that's right. Right. What's going on? That's Ryan. <laughs> Okay, I have a German version. Ryan connected. Again. We're going to wrap it up, guys. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much. Hmm? You can you hear me? Oh yeah. Okay. But oh, it's complicated. <laughs> it's live. <laughs> it's live. You at least know it's live. It's not fake live. It's live. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, for everybody. Me. So next week we'll be back again on Tuesday in uh, usual time. One day. Don't forget to fall. And on Friday, I forgot on Friday, it's a shark week. So uh, come and join us for some shark fun. <laughs> you found a shark too, huh? Well, I think it was a shark too. It's pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> right? I thought it was exciting. I don't know. Um, I was going to say next week, don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Our uh, handle is baking with my BFF. Don't pay attention to me, just talk. <laughs> I'm trying to locate. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm talking like a robot. <laughs> I'm trying to locate. Um... I can find it. Follow us on Insta. Oh, here it is. Yes. So follow us on Instagram, baking with my BFF for uh, some updates. And next week um, we have a, we have a plan. We are going to do actually. Uh, it's a slash. It's a little tropical thing. We decide we wanted to do um, pina colada. Or are we doing? Are we not doing that? I, well, I thought. We, well, we, I thought we were doing cupcakes. No, no, no pina colada cupcakes. Oh. With decorated, oh, we'll just, we'll just, okay, well, I'll look in my. <laughs> we'll Bye. have another meeting. <laughs> Thanks, okay, everybody. Bye. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I have to find my slide. There it is. Okay, See you guys bye. next week or on Friday. Bye.